Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment and in this video I'm going to be spending some time specifically talking about the John Deere canister style filter versus some of the other brands out there to try to bust that myth that all filters are built and made the same. So if you'll stick with me here, we'll get started. Now, what we have here, as you can see, is going to be an example of a John Deere, a Baldwin, a Wix, and a Napa canister style filter. Now, as you can see from the outside here, they all look exactly the same, but let's go ahead and take these tops off and break it down and show just a little more of the interior and show what exactly makes these filters different. Now, the first thing that we're gonna notice is right here at the top is going to be our spring system. So if we see here at the John Deere, we're gonna have this smaller spring. As we move to the Baldwin, we have a little bit larger spring here. And then whenever we move to the Wix and the Napa, Napa, which are going to be identical being as that Wix makes the Napa filter you have that lot larger spring here now the question is is it why are these springs different so we'll go ahead and get into that next and why those springs are different is because these springs are used to put pressure from the top of the canister to the nut plate of the filter. And so what, what those are for is going to be to hold that filter down onto the sealing system. Now, as we see here on the wicks, what we have here is a more plastic style filter, kind of a hard plastic filter that fits into the actual filter itself and then down onto the nut plate. So we're having to have this larger spring to create that more pressure to make sure that our canister is staying in place and creating that seal and not allowing that filter to leak. Now also, like I said, we're gonna see the exact same thing here on the Napa. Once again, having that solid, more plastic-like sealing material and having to have that put that extra pressure to hold that to the seal. Now, once we move to the Baldwin here, we have that little bit smaller spring. And reason being is, is that Baldwin actually uses a little bit different sealing material. This is going to be a little more like a rubber seal. Not quite full rubber, but it has a lot more flex and give than what we saw on the Wix and the Napa. So it has a little smaller spring because it's not having to put as much tension on the top to be able to keep that canister pushing against that filter to keep it against the nut plate. Now, as you notice here on the deer, we have a very small spring, but also as you'll notice here, our nut plate is actually fixed to the filter itself. So we're really not having to have that pressure put on top to keep this canister to necessarily pushing the filter down to the base as there is an adhesive that actually holds that and creates that seal. Rather, this spring is mainly meant to keep the integrity of this cap and to be able to handle those pressures that this oil filter is going to carry. So as you can see there, guys, I'm not able to remove that filter from the nut plate. It is built right onto the filter. Next, let's talk about pleats. Now here on the pleats, we're talking about the actual filtering surface of these filters. Now, some of the things that we're gonna be looking for is number of pleats per filter. We're also looking for how straight the pleats are, how equidistant they are, whether they have gaps or they've got places where the pleats are too close together. All of these are things that we need to be considering when we're looking at these different filters. Now let's start with number of pleats and we'll start here with the John Deere we have a total number of pleats around the filter of 86. Now, once we move to the bald one, this significantly drops. We drop down to 67 pleats on this filter. And then the wicks and the Napa come in just slightly below the John Deere at 78. So overall, you're going to have better surface area, more surface area here at the John Deere than necessarily these other brands. But wicks and Napa are going to have considerably more even than the bald one. So next, let's look at our pleat construction. Let's look at just how well these pleats are, how straight they are, how equidistant they are. Pretty good here with the John Deere. Now as we move to the Baldwin, now you have to keep in mind that we have 19 less pleats in this Baldwin than we do the Deere. So as we can see here, we've got some gapping We've got some places where those are a little bit closer together and those pleats are just a little larger to try to make up for the absence of the pleating from the other two 
manufacturers here. Now, as we move to the wicks, we can see pretty good construction here, pretty straight. We are still having some of those places to where they are a little bit gapped and a little bit close together. Same thing here as we move to the Napa pretty good job. But one thing that we need to talk about with this pleating system that is a very big deal is how the pleats are held together. So on the John Deere and the Baldwin, what you're going to see is an actual metal crimp here that holds these pleats together. So that's a big deal when we're talking about the pressure, the life of this filter, the amount of oil that's going through it. With this having a metal pleat, you're going to have a lot less chance of that happening, happening to tear and come apart and ruin this filter. Whereas when we do move to the wicks and the Napa, what we're looking at that's holding these pleat systems together is actually just going to be an adhesive. So these are all things, guys, that we just need to consider when we're looking into these different filter options. Next, let's talk about the nut plate as this is gonna be a very important feature to the filter. This is where the oil is going to come in and go out of your filter. So we need to be looking at these things. And as we look here at the John Deere, you can see just how many holes there are and how large they are on the John Deere. Then when we move here to the Baldwin, as we can see, we have fewer holes here and smaller holes. So it's gonna be a little harder for that oil to go in and out of that filter. And then moving to the wicks and the Napa, once again, you are going to have the smaller holes there than what you would have with the John Deere. In comparison, guys, what you have to think about is that in these cold start situations, when we're trying to start these tractors up on those cold mornings, is that sometimes oil is going to have that consistency of honey. So you have to think about the amount of holes that are in these nut plates to give the most opening for that oil to flow freely. So you want to make sure to think about that when looking into these canister style filters. So guys, I hope this video helped you better understand these canister filters and see just exactly what you're getting when you're going out and buying your filters for your machines. And hopefully this helps you make that decision on whether you do want to stick with with the John Deere OE filters, which we highly suggest, or whether you wanna go with one of the wheel fit filters. But guys, overall, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, we'd ask that you'd hit that like button and give us a subscribe as that helps us out as well. And also guys, if you're looking for any of these filters or needing any other parts for your John Deere equipment, make sure to check us out at 247parts.com. I'll leave that link in the description below. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Let's go. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.